Good morning from Magic Kingdom. We are here bright and early to show you all of our latest tips and tricks for using Disney Genie Plus, including some we've never shared before. Let's go do it. Hi ho everybody, this is Rob with Ear Scouts coming to you from the Magic Kingdom. It has been ages since we made our original strategy video for here at Magic Kingdom and so much has changed. The entire Genie system has changed. You can modify lightning lanes now. Some rides have closed, some rides have opened. It's a whole new world here at Magic Kingdom and we're gonna teach you all about it in today's video. One of the first things you're probably gonna notice if you haven't already is that Disney Genie now fluctuates in price. Now, this is bad actually for a couple of reasons. Number one, nobody likes to pay more and now the price can range anywhere from $15 all the way up to a whopping $35 and it wouldn't shock me if it goes even higher than that. But this is bad not just because you might have to pay more, it's also bad because Disney has gotten really effective at getting more and more people to purchase Disney Genie Plus. So before, Genie was replacing FastPass. FastPass was free, so $15 seemed really expensive. But now, if you come into Magic Kingdom and you're expecting to pay $35 and it's only $15, man, it's like Genie's on the clearance rack. So, of course, you're going to go ahead and grab it. In some cases, it can be almost as competitive as it is on those $35 days simply because so many people are using the service. Another thing that can happen when so many people are using the service is we find some of those Disney Genie Gremlins and I found one this morning right at 7 a.m. I refreshed just like you're supposed to and when I tapped in instead of finding my very first ride I found a Disney Genie Gremlin. But honestly it kind of works out because it gives me an opportunity to teach you guys one of my newest tips and it's called Rope Drop Plan B. We're heading up here to the Rope Drop line. When we get there I'll tell you all about it. All right we are all set for Rope Drop. Quick reminder when you're doing Rope Drop make sure you don't get too close up to the rope. You want to give some space to the cast members and most importantly when they do drop this rope, don't make a mad dash like it's Black Friday at Walmart. You're gonna walk casually, stay behind the cast members. That's really important because they're gonna lead you to your first ride. Let's get back to this morning when I was booking my very first lightning lane. So I started like I always do. I went ahead and I set up my free Disney Genie service. This lets you pin the rides that you're most interested in. In this case, the one ride that we're gonna try to book this morning to the top of our tip board screen. Just go to your main menu, tap on My Disney Genie Day, and then you're gonna tap on Get Started. It's gonna ask you some basic questions, but eventually it's gonna ask you what rides you're interested in. Here, you're only gonna choose the one ride that you're planning to book first thing in the morning. For us, that was Jungle Cruise. After that, it's gonna ask you if you're interested in princesses and other things. Just skip all that for now because we don't want anything else cluttering up our tip board screen. Now comes the part where we just wait patiently for seven o'clock because that's when we can book our very first lightning lane. You just gonna wanna basically pull down and refresh that screen repeatedly until it hits seven o'clock. At seven o'clock, those grayed out buttons are gonna be activated and you can tap in, but then look at what happened to us this morning when we tapped in. We got a Disney Genie Gremlin. It said the service was unavailable, so we had to make a very quick plan B. What I recommend that you do in these situations, pick what I call a right now ride. So this is gonna be a ride that's very close to that first attraction that you wanna do, but that's easier to get a quick return time for. In our case, that was Pirates of the Caribbean. I went ahead and I booked Pirates for 910. Now you can try modifying that Pirates Lightning Lane. Just tap on those three little dots on the reservation, choose Modify Plan. You can try to maybe get Jungle Cruise inched up closer to opening time, but if you can't, don't worry, we're gonna actually ride Jungle Cruise here at Rope Drop. And then because Pirates of the Caribbean is right next door, as soon as we go over to Pirates and tap in, we will be able to book our next lightning lane. The reason we wouldn't want to get a later time for Jungle Cruise is because that would basically stop us up. We would not be able to book another Genie Plus lightning lane until we tapped in. So let's say we had Jungle Cruise at 10.30. 
that's a full hour and a half of park time that we cannot use Disney Genie Plus. Instead, with the strategy that we're using now, we're gonna actually get two rides done and we'll probably be able to book our next ride starting around 9.20. And we're off. I always think it's funny, whenever you rope drop Jungle Cruise, there's no line, but you still do the full tour of the line. A quick boat orientation. If you look up, you're gonna see the top of the boat. Look down, that's the bottom of the boat. If at any point in our cruise those two flip, you guys should swim, okay? <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to start the day. Skipper Lauren was amazing, and I love how that attraction looks first thing in the morning. The light coming through the mist in the trees, it's just so beautiful. The real reason, though, that I like to do that attraction first is because it is typically the first attraction to run out of lightning lanes in the day. So that is something that we're going to want to pay attention to. I'm going to get into that in a little bit more detail after we ride our next ride because we got to tap in here before we can book our next lightning lane. So let's go say yo ho yo ho to Captain Jack and the gang at Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, our day may have started with a Disney Genie Gremlin, but now we have gotten on two of the biggest rides in this park in the first 30 minutes. So all's well that ends well, in my opinion. As soon as I tapped in over there at Pirates of the Caribbean, I fired up my Disney experience and I booked another of what I like to call a right now ride. So I didn't take any time setting anything up. I just scrolled down to Magic Carpets of Aladdin. I knew probably there was gonna be a really quick return time for that and I booked it. The reason why I did this, I don't wanna ride Magic Carpets of Aladdin, that's not the plan, but in the off chance that we have to use the two hour rule, which probably won't, but in the off chance that we did, we wanna start that clock counting. In case you're not aware, you can book your next lightning lane either after you tap in at the most recent lightning lane you booked, which is what we just did here at Pirates of the Caribbean, or you can wait two hours from the moment that you booked it. Because of that, in case we need to use this two hour rule for any reason, I like to just go ahead and book something. I also try to book something that I can get on right now. That way, if things don't work out, I don't find another plan I wanna go with, I have something I can do at that moment, which would have been Magic Carpets of Aladdin. Now comes the time when we're going to play those Disney Genie slots. So if you've never seen my videos before, I'm gonna show you what this means. You're gonna fire up that tip board screen. At the top of that screen, you'll see a little link for edit selections. Tap on that, and now you're just gonna go through and you're gonna pick some rides that you're most interested in riding at this moment and uncheck the ones that you had selected before. This is gonna bring that new group of rides to the top of your tip board screen. Now that that's all set up, head back into the tip board, find the reservation that you currently have, which for us right now is Magic Carpets of Aladdin. You're gonna see three little dots there. Tap on those three little dots, a menu pops up, and then you're gonna choose Modify Plan. Now look what happens. That reservation is up there at the top, and right below that are all of the rides that we just picked. 
Our goal is to get a return time that's really quick at one of these rides, that way we can tap in and go ahead and book another one. I was pretty lucky just now, I was able to get a great return time for Big Thunder Mountain. Just because we have a great time, doesn't mean we can't make it a little bit better. From here on, you're just gonna repeat that process. You're just gonna keep modifying the reservation that you have and trying to get it a little bit better. As you can see, I was super successful this morning. We went from 10 o'clock to 9.50 to 9.45 really quickly. I just left it at 9.45 because as I'm filming this, it's 9.40. In case you're not aware, you can tap in at a lightning lane five minutes before your return window or 20 minutes after. So we're actually already in the time frame where we could go tap in and then we can book our next ride. As soon as we get off of this ride, I'm gonna show you guys why I chose the rides I did to start with, and I'm gonna help you with the formula that you'll need to pick the rides that you should do first when you're here at Magic Kingdom. Now let's go blow some stuff up at Big Thunder. Whenever I take a ride on Big Thunder, I love to come over here to this little dock area. It's right beside the ride, and it is one of my favorite shady rocking chair spots in Magic Kingdom. So now let's talk about strategy for this park. Which rides should you do first? That's actually changed a good bit since the last time we made this Genie Tips video for Magic Kingdom. Before, the old top things you needed to go for were number one, meeting Mickey at Town Square Theater. That was actually the lightning lane that would usually run out first in the day. That has changed. I don't know what Disney's done. Maybe they've added some capacity, but it really isn't that hard to get a lightning lane to meet Mickey now. So that one has fallen off of our list. The other one that has fallen off of our list is sadly Splash Mountain because it doesn't exist anymore. It's closed to make way for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. So now the attractions that you should be focused on when you're here at Magic Kingdom, number one, the big one is Jungle Cruise. That one will typically run out the quickest. And as you saw this morning, the return time can get really late really fast. After that, I would focus on Peter Pan's flight. Space Mountain, and Big Thunder Mountain. There's also a character meet and greet to keep your eye on. No longer is it Mickey, now it is meeting Ariel at her grotto. That's over by Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. That meet and greet actually wasn't even happening when we made our last Genie Plus video. So since it is one of the newest meet and greets in the park, it makes sense that that one is a super popular one right now. I've actually never met Ariel in her grotto, so we're gonna put that on our to-do list today, especially cause that brand new Little Mermaid movie's coming out. So first, you definitely want to try to knock out any of those rides that are in that top tier list that are also on your must-do list. Now, obviously, if you don't care about riding some of those rides, you can take them off the list. But the ones that do matter to you, get those done first. After that, we can move on to what I like to call the tier two rides. So on tier two, you're going to find Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean. I would also put Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin on that tier two list. And a new entry on that list is Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I have definitely been noticing recently that ride is becoming more and more popular and the lightning lanes are starting to run out, especially later in the night. It becomes really hard to grab a lightning lane for that one, at least one with a quick return time. So I am now moving that one into my tier two. The rest of the rides in this park are all pretty easy to grab. So I would say that we can focus on those after lunch, later in the afternoon. But here in the morning, we definitely wanna get those biggest ticket attractions done as quickly as we can. So that's exactly what I did. I started I started by booking a right now ride. I chose It's a Small World because it's relatively close to us and I knew I could get a right now return time, which I did. I then edited my selections and I, this time I'm focused on Space Mountain, Peter Pan's Flight. Those are the two that I really wanna get done. I was able to get a pretty decent return time for Space Mountain and then I backed it up even further to 10.30. 
That means we can tap in at 1025, which is really only about 15, 20 minutes from now. So that's actually perfect. I didn't feel the need to play the slots any more than that. A lot of folks ask, how long should you spend playing the slots? And of course, that's subjective. It depends a lot on how busy the park is. If the park is slammed and you can get a halfway decent return time, sometimes it's best to just settle for that and enjoy the park. But on days like today when it's not terribly busy, I will tend to play the slots a little bit more because I can usually get a better return time. That said, I never play the slots more than 15 minutes when I'm here in the park. That's just kind of my own personal rule. Every now and then I break it, but for the most part, I want to enjoy this park. I don't want to spend more than 10, 15 minutes staring at my phone. You can decide what that time limit is for you, but I think 15 is pretty much the max, at least for me. Those of you who have been following the news here at Magic Kingdom, you're probably thinking, Rob, you're missing a really big, really important ride in your list, and that is, of course, Tron. Don't worry, I have a plan for Tron. We're going to get to that later in this video. But now, let's head on over to the sister attraction next door to Tron, Space Mountain. We could walk over there to Tomorrowland, but that's not nearly as much fun as taking the Walt Disney World Railroad. Luckily enough, there happens to be a station right next door to Big Thunder Mountain here in Frontierland. So let's take a ride on the Walt Disney World Railroad. If you want to ride the Disney World Railroad, there are three places you can do it. One is here at Frontierland. The second is over at Storybook Circus. And just know that there is a cut through path now that'll take you from Storybook Circus into Tomorrowland. That's what we're gonna do. The third spot is at Main Street USA. That's kind of the main station right as you enter the park. I don't really love getting on at Main Street because a lot of times there will be a super long wait. That's where people think to go get the train is that spot. But if you come to one of these other two stations, you can still ride the train as long as you like. You can do the full loop and you don't have to wait in that longer line you'll often find at the front of the park. If you're wondering about timing, it typically takes seven minutes to get from one station to the next, and it's about 20 minutes for the full loop. What a lovely ride. That definitely beats walking all the way across this park. So right now I'm gonna show you this cut through I was talking about. It's right here next to the Barnstormer. So basically you're gonna go just to the left of the Barnstormer and you'll see this pathway. It's gonna lead us under Tron and into Tomorrowland. Speaking of Tron, it is of course a brand new ride, which means we have some brand new tips. In case you're not aware, you can't just get into a line for Tron like you can any other ride here at the park. You have to have what's called a virtual boarding group. We made a whole video about that. We'll put a link to it in the description down below. But the idea is starting at 7 a.m. and again at 1 p.m., you're gonna have a chance to go into the app and try to secure a virtual boarding group. This morning, I opted not to try at 7 a.m. because I wanted to be focused on that Genie Plus Lightning Lane, which also comes available at 7 a.m. I also wanted to wait until 1 p.m. because that gives us a chance to possibly ride at night. Now, there's no chance that you'll get to ride at night pretty much if you book in the morning. So that 1 p.m. drop does at least give you a chance. So here comes that brand new tip. I always recommend when you've got to book something at a certain time, like the virtual boarding group at 1 p.m., set yourself an alarm on your phone. But I've got an additional tip to that. Make it a silent alarm. In case you're not aware, with iPhones at least, and I'm sure it's similar on Android, you can go in when you create the alarm, choose no sound, and turn on vibration. It's basically a great way to ensure that you do get that reminder to book your virtual boarding group, but you don't risk ruining an attraction for everybody around you. Now let's go take an interstellar adventure on Space Mountain.
was a super fun spin on Space Mountain. Right now, we are gonna go ahead and play those Disney Genie slots to get our next ride. I started by getting a right now ride, which is gonna be Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. I literally got it for right now. I wanna show you though a quick little trick that will help you when you're playing those Genie slots. If you're only interested in the two rides that are below the one that you're modifying, just tap into the one that's first in that list. And then watch what happens when you refresh. It's gonna jump back to that ride. So this is a great way where you can get the two rides that you care most about in your view, and that ride that's up there at the top that you're not concerned about goes up out of view. I did play those Disney Genie slots for a little bit. I didn't get anything I was in love with, but I'm kind of fine with it because Buzz is on our tier two list. It's right here. I'm happy to get that one knocked off. Strap in, Space Rangers. It's time to go battle Zerg and save the galaxy. Game begin. And we are Galactic Heroes yet again. Once you know all the tips and tricks, you can actually get Galactic Hero pretty easily, which that means you've maxed out the score. What I like to do now when I'm riding by myself, I'll max out the score and then I'll play left-handed on the other side. See how high I can get on that one. Today's video is a Disney Genie tips video, not a Buzz Lightyear tips video, but if you'd like to see some tips for getting that high score on Space Ranger Spin, let us know in the comments down below and who knows, maybe we'll do it in a future video. We are now hitting that middle of the day period and you remember how earlier I said there are certain rides you want to try to get knocked out as quickly as you can because they're going to get harder to book later in the day? Well, we are now in that period later in the day when things are getting a lot harder to book. It's 1130 right now, so the quickest return time I was able to find for Peter Pan's flight was 2.33 o'clock. Now, when I played the slots, I was able to back that up a little bit, but not a lot. So what I did, I went ahead and I booked as my right now ride, Haunted Mansion. I have that set for noon. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna go grab a lunch. I made a mobile order over here at Pinocchio Village House. And while I eat, just gonna kinda casually play those slots and see if I can land a good return time for Peter Pan's flight or also that meet and greet with Ariel at her grotto. Fingers crossed we can grab one of those, but if not, as soon as we're done with lunch, we'll be right on time for Haunted Mansion. So it's kind of a win-win. If you're a foodie, probably Magic Kingdom is not gonna be your favorite part. The food here is just kind of fine on average. Uh, this place is no different. I do love coming here though, not really so much for the food, but for the view. This is one of the most beautiful seating areas you're gonna find at any of the quick service spots. You actually have two really cool choices. If you wanna be inside in the air conditioning, you can get a view of the boats going into, it's a small world, which is kind of fun. But my favorite is to come out here on this balcony and look at this view of the castle. Food-wise, I do like also that you can get a side salad here with your meal. So I'm getting one of the margarita flatbreads with a side salad. So as theme park lunches go, it's moderately healthy. Well, that was awesome. Not the lunch. The lunch was fine. It was okay. Pretty good. What was awesome, though, was we had that spectacular view of the castle. It was a nice breeze blowing and I played those Disney Genie slots. We got super lucky. I actually used a technique that I've talked about in other videos. What I actually did was I made use of a Disney Genie Gremlin. What I mean by that is sometimes when you tap in on a return time, when it gets to the next screen, that return time is actually already gone and it shows either a later return time or an earlier return time. But we can actually use this to our advantage. So instead of pulling to refresh the screen and then having to tap in quickly on the time, what we can do instead is just tap into the time and then tap back out. And when we do that, we're essentially refreshing every time that we tap in. The good thing is if we get a return time that we like, then we're done. We don't need to worry about tapping in fast enough. We just did the tap. So I used that trick right here for Peter Pan's flight. 
It's at 1225 and right now it is a little after 1215. So time to sprinkle on some fairy dust because in a couple minutes we are off to Neverland. Peter Pan's flight is one of those rides that actually has two touch points. There's one as you're entering the queue, and there's another one right before you get on the ride. The reason I bring this up is because right now we're kind of waiting in a line. This would be the perfect time to play those Disney Genie slots, but unfortunately we can't play until we tap in at this second tap point. With that flight, we only have one more from our top tier that we need to book. That is that meet and greet with Ariel at her grotto. We've also got two more of our mid-tier rides. We've got Haunted Mansion and Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I went ahead as soon as I got off and I grabbed a Right Now ride, which conveniently enough was right across the street. So our Right Now ride is It's a Small World. I played the slots for a few minutes, but honestly, I wasn't seeing anything great. And this Right Now ride is literally right here. So we're gonna go ahead and tap in on this and then we'll start booking what comes next. Well, that was a very eventful cruise around the world. Number one, my alarm went off. Thankfully, it was silent. It didn't ruin the cruise for everyone around me, but it did remind me that I needed to grab that virtual queue for Tron. I was successful. I was able to get a virtual queue pretty easily. Lately, it's been seeming that it's not really that hard to get a one o'clock virtual queue slot for Tron. Now, that might change when we get into the thick of summer, but for right now, folks have sometimes actually even been able to park hop into this park, which means they're coming in after two o'clock and they've still been able to get virtual queue slots. So am I saying you should wait until two? No, probably not. But doing it at one, at least for right now, seems to be a pretty safe bet. The other thing that happened while we were on that cruise, as I was getting on the boat, I was looking for like a right now ride to grab and I noticed something. I noticed that Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh was down and I could get a Lightning Lane return time that was relatively soon. So what I decided to do, I decided to throw the dice and hope that by the time it came around for that Lightning Lane, that ride would still be down, which would mean instead of getting to ride that ride, we would get what I like to call a bonus lightning lane. Disney calls it an experience redemption. Luckily for us, that is exactly what happened. Our gamble paid off. We now have a bonus lightning lane that we can use at a whole list of attractions. Unfortunately, meeting Ariel is not one of them because I would use it there if I could, but there are a ton of attractions on there. You don't have to book a lightning lane. You're basically gonna go to one of the rides that qualifies for the bonus. You're just gonna tap in as if you had a lightning lane and it's just gonna work like a magic. You will be able to get in at whatever time you want. The other cool thing about having this bonus lightning lane, it does allow us to ride certain rides twice. So even if you've already ridden something with a Genie Plus Lightning Lane, normally that would mean you couldn't ride it again, but with a bonus, you can. So now we've got that bonus. I also was able to snag a pretty decent return time over at Haunted Mansion. It's at 140. It is 120 right now. 
What I'd recommend doing is really focus on some of these attractions that don't have lightning lanes. There are some of those. One of them is right here in Fantasyland. The Prince Charming Regal Carousel does not have a lightning lane, so you might as well get in that line and do that while we're waiting to head over to Haunted Mansion. The main rides in this park that don't offer lightning lanes are this one, Prince Charming Regal Carousel. There's two big ones over in Tomorrowland. The Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover does not have a lightning lane, nor does Astro Orbiter right above it. Some other things that you can't get lightning lanes for are the Liberty Square Riverboat, the railroad, which we already did. Also the rafts that take you to Tom Sawyer's Island. There's no lightning lane for those. And also there's a walkthrough attraction, the Swiss Family Treehouse does not have a lightning lane, but honestly, you would never need one for that anyway. That was positively delightful. We are right on time for our visit with the ghost host and the original Bridezilla. I'm telling you, you think you've encountered some Bridezillas in your life. This one tops them all. Plus she carries a hatchet. She is scary. a ghoulishly good time at the Haunted Mansion. That's one of those attractions, no matter how many times I do it, it never gets old, but honestly, I kind of feel that way about almost every attraction in Walt Disney World. Let's face it, I've done all these attractions a lot of times, it still doesn't get old. Speaking of attractions, I just remembered I left out a pretty major attraction when I was talking about the rides that don't have Genie Plus lightning lanes. This one does have a lightning lane, but it is an individual attraction lightning lane, meaning if you want to ride it, you're going to have to pay extra for that one ride. I'm talking, of course, about Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Now, my favorite way to do Seven Dwarfs Mine Train is actually to wait until the end of the night. I like to get in that queue just before the park closes, because as long as you're in there one second before park close, they'll let you stay in as long as it takes to ride. Tonight, we might try something a little bit different, because several people have recommended I should try riding that during fireworks. They say it's a really cool experience. Now, my favorite fireworks ride is definitely Big Thunder Mountain. We showed that off in our No Genie, No Problem video, but tonight, Maybe we'll give a try to Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Maybe we'll do that during the fireworks. So I did get super lucky. Right before we went into Haunted Mansion, I was able to grab a really great return time actually to see Ariel in her grotto. It had been showing as after four o'clock and as soon as I loaded up, it was like two something. So I was like, score, we'll take that. The only catch there is that's going to overlap the Festival of Fantasy Parade, which starts at three. That parade typically goes at noon and again at three. I was planning to catch the three o'clock one. You can get a lightning lane for that parade, but I do not recommend it. And I'll tell you why. Number one, the place where you go to watch when you have a lightning lane, there is no shade. It is crazy hot there. It's not a very comfortable place to watch the parade from. Now it is a beautiful view because you will have Cinderella Castle behind the parade, but honestly, I think the view that you get over here in Frontierland is every bit as good and you get some shade if you find the right spot. So we're gonna head over here at three o'clock so I can show you what I'm talking about. Right in front of the Country Bears or in that general area where there's that awning over you, that's where I usually like to watch from, but we'll check that out a little bit later. But right now we've got some time to kill. I feel like this would be a great time to get some more of these rides in that don't have lightning lanes and maybe check out a show. One of my favorite shows that we never do in videos is actually right over here. Let's go check out Hall of Presidents. <music> If you've never
never seen Hall of Presidents, I definitely recommend checking it out. This show is really special. It was uh, really a nod to Walt because Walt was really obsessed with history and specifically the U.S. presidency. Honest Abe was Walt's favorite president. Honestly, it was because of that love of Abraham Lincoln and the presidency that we have this attraction today. They imagined something new in the history of the world. A leader not born to power like a king or queen. A leader who has not seized power through conquest. A leader not separate from the people, but elected by the people. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. To speak out for what is right, to shake up the status quo, hence America. just really kind of fills me with a lot of hope every time I see it. No matter how bad things in the news are, you go see that show and you realize things have definitely been really bad before and we always make it through in the end. So if you just need a little dose of optimism, check out Hall of Presidents. We've got a little bit more time before the parade, so I think we can squeeze in one more show and it's another one of my favorites. Let's go say hey to Zeke and Zeb and Ted and Fred and a bear named Tennessee. pretty well but not quite perfectly as we came out of the theater actually the parade had already started but what did I tell you about that spot right outside of the country bears you get a great view plus you have some shade and no lightning lane required so now we are running just a little bit late to go meet Ariel in her grotto I don't want to keep her waiting so let's head on back over into new fantasy land and say hey to Ariel I have no trouble booking our next lightning lane for Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. It's about 30 minutes from now. I could probably play the genie slots and get that backed up a little bit, but there's no reason to because it's time to go do Tron. It's gonna be perfect timing, really. I think by the time we get on and off of Tron, we'll be right on time to do Winnie the Pooh, and then it is going to be a mad dash. digitized back into the real world. Is that a word? De-digitized? Not sure. But we are back from our Tron adventure and now comes my favorite part of this video. I love it when we get all of the tough to book things done because everything else 
it is going to blow your mind how quickly we're going to burn through the rest of these lightning lanes. Are you ready? Buckle up, y'all. It's going to be a wild ride. this montage for a very important message. I am starving. So I'm actually going to head over to my favorite restaurant in all of Magic Kingdom, Skipper Canteen. I'm gonna enjoy a delightful meal, perhaps an adult beverage, and then we will continue our montage after that. One hour later. So believe it or not, I had a really sound plan. I was gonna have dinner at Skipper Canteen, which we just did, and then I was gonna go next door to Magic Carpets of Aladdin, which is one of the few lightning lanes we have left to book. Unfortunately, Magic Carpets of Aladdin had a different plan because it is down right now. So without even thinking, I just booked the next ride that I had in my list, which was Mad Tea Party. So I just ate a really huge meal with drinks and dessert, and now, I'm gonna spin, which is probably a really bad idea, honestly, but you know what? Good idea or not, let's go have a tea party, y'all. Now, of course, we could just not spin the teacup, you know? We could just let it do its own natural little spin, but what's the fun in that, right? I mean, you're on the teacups, you gotta spin. Believe it or not, it actually wasn't that bad. I think maybe after years of coming to Disney World, like three days a week and riding roller coasters and Tower of Terror and teacups, I think maybe I've just developed a really strong stomach and I can handle a big meal and the teacups apparently. So I feel like that is a very rare and somewhat useless skill, but a skill that I have attained nonetheless. Well, now it is time to continue with our whirlwind of rides. How many more things can we get done here at Magic Kingdom before the park closes? Let's find out.
What an incredible day here at Magic Kingdom. We just had, y'all, we did every single ride in this park with a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. We did virtually every ride in this park that doesn't have a Genie Plus Lightning Lane. We saw a ton of shows. We had a quick service meal. We had a table service meal. We rode the railroad. And we actually ended the day with two bonus Lightning Lanes we didn't even use. We got a ton of stuff done in one park day. And that's kind of the magic of Disney Genie Plus. Yes, it's a lot to manage. Yes, you got to keep on top of it. You got to book those lightning lanes. A lot of people don't like staring at their phones, but honestly, we didn't really stare at our phone that much today. Well, I hope you guys learned a ton of stuff that's going to help you use Disney Genie Plus in this park. If you did, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and ring that bell so you'll be notified whenever new videos like this come out. In fact, if you enjoyed this one, we're going to be doing this same thing in the other three parks. Brand new Genie Plus tips coming to you for 2023. Until next time, don't forget to think happy thoughts, everybody. We'll see you again real soon.